Greetings, everyone. I'm Natalie, and I'm delighted to have you join me for another IMM video. Today, we will discuss the concept of catalyst, and we will explore the design ordering principles. With these tools, we form the strategic plan and we get one step closer to designing. So let's dive right in. Let's set the stage by revisiting the key categories, porosity, proximity, diversity, interface, permeability, accessibility, effectiveness, and continuity. If these sound familiar, great. If not, you can catch up by watching our introductory video on them. These key categories act as dynamic engines, propelling our in-depth examination and assessment of urban structures. Think of them as our guiding radar, steering us through the process of problem identification, or, as we term it in our lab, diagnosis. In the realm of medicine, diagnosis involves identifying the nature of an illness. And here, we follow a similar approach. Utilizing detailed maps and numerical patterns, the key categories unveil various structural mechanisms within urban systems. This allows us to precisely pinpoint areas that may not be functioning optimally and recognize the catalysts for transformation. In essence, they illuminate the path toward enhancing urban functionality and resilience. Moving beyond the key categories, it's crucial to acknowledge that they aren't the exclusive factors in pinpointing catalysts for change. In addition to structural assessment, performance analysis plays a pivotal role in this process. We employ an extensive list of performance indicators, like almost 150 of them, handpicked from scientific literature and subjected to constant updates. This curated collection spans a comprehensive spectrum of performances within the built environment. Reading these indicators allows us to identify areas of weakness in performance. It's worth noting that access to reliable data significantly smoothens this process. By simultaneously evaluating the structural parameters with the key categories and analyzing performance indicators, we arrive at an objective conclusion regarding the catalysts for transformation. This strategic approach is our secret weapon for gaining profound insights into urban systems and making judicious decisions to elevate their performance. Essentially, the catalyst appears in the form of the key categories, well, as one or a couple of them that are identified as the main cause of the system's malfunctioning. Here, the designer takes center stage in a pivotal role. Armed with the results of the structural investigation and performance evaluation, they must discern and select the correct transformation catalysts through deduction. It is worth saying that catalysts aren't necessarily those that seem to be the most problematic elements, rather the ones that harbor the root of the problem from a systemic perspective. For instance, observing a deficiency of shops in a specific area may not automatically implicate proximity as the catalyst. Instead, it could be a lack of connectivity in the street network. Hence, the interface. It's a little bit tricky, isn't it? Therefore, the designer needs to be a true systems thinker. Catalyst selected. What's the next move? Enter the design ordering principles, DOP. DOP includes a set of globally accepted principles designed to drive urban contexts towards sustainability. Like the performance indicators, they are accurately selected from the scientific literature and have been adopted in a way to be fully compatible with the Agenda 2030. IMN works with 12 design ordering principles, addressing a wide range of structural and management aspects. Moreover, each key category is directly related to some specific principle in the list. These relationships enable the designer to define the strategic plan in a tight integration with the diagnosis result. Now, I can almost hear you saying, nah, really? Another set of principles. I get it. Sustainability principles aren't exactly newsworthy. But here's the scoop. IMM approach to these principles is what sets us apart. It's not just about the principles, it's about how we uniquely leverage them to reshape urban environments. Unlike most schools in sustainability science, IMM doesn't treat DOP as a universal commandment-like checklist. They are not a fixed to-do list to be forced anywhere for a better ranking. In IMM, DOP are locally sensitive, adapting to contextual catalysts, 
and the specific problems identified during diagnosis. In every project, they take shape based on the very local situation. This means the DOP change their order every time to target the priorities of the project context and help the catalyst to incite the transformation. As mentioned earlier, eight DOP are directly connected to key categories, allowing the designer to come up with the final list based on the selected catalysts. In this sense, the strategic plan is fully customized for the diagnosed urban system. DOP are grouped into four categories, morphological, typological, technological, and urban support systems. The first DOP considers the built environment as an ecosystem made of natural and artificial spatial elements and seeks a balance in the land cover. Identifying local parameters for spatial balance is vital for many important design decisions. The next principle aims at improving the urban flow and advocates for permeability. A permeable void system can highly influence the movement within the neighborhoods and their social characteristics. The third DOP is all about mixed-use development and encourages an efficient distribution of different types of uses. A strategic mixture of uses increases the self-sufficiency of areas and shortens the distances between destination points. Hence, it can pave the way for healthier modes of transportation. Next up is about integrating diversity in natural and human systems. This DOP reinforces the previous one by ensuring a more targeted mixed-use development with higher levels of self-sufficiency. Moreover, it can liven up the atmosphere by fueling the social interactions. The next two DOP are about designing connected open systems as a backbone element of flow distribution. By now, I am sure that you can see how this principle backs the others by smoothening the movement and defining an integrated layout of destination points. Then we focus on balancing public transportation potential and advocating intermodality in its structure. A well-covered public transportation structure that offers an interwoven system of choices is both convenient and resilient. Such a system plays a vital role in reducing private car trips and the pollution associated with them. The next DOP emphasizes integrated local energy production systems going beyond single housing units. Rather than individual buildings, energy management is more sustainable on the neighborhood scale. Our next DOP covers sustainable access to food and agricultural resources, adopting circular models in waste management and addressing water management to ensure safe water resources in the ground. They address the necessity of having a functional infrastructural system and an effective strategic plan in urban management. I would like to highlight again that the design ordering principles conform to sustainable development goals and are directly connected to the targets within them. Through DOP, we can consider IMM as a methodological interpretation of Agenda 2030, which enables the designer to plan locally and execute the project in a strong rapport with the globally accepted objectives. Wrapping up our overview of DOP, that this is just the beginning. Join me in the next video where we'll explore how DOP seamlessly integrate into a sophisticated wheel of actions creating a tailor-made action plan for the diagnosed context. I'm already excited about it. So until then, stay curious, and I'll see you in our next video.